The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus had crossed over into the territory of the Gerasim, John's disciples came to him with the objection, Why is it that while we and the Pharisees fast, your disciples do not? Jesus said to them, How can wedding guests go in mourning so long as the groom is with them? When the day comes and the groom is taken away, then they will fast. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us all be seated. Today is Friday after Ash Wednesday. And Holy Mother, the Church, continues to teach us the life of repentance. We have differentiated the repentance of the Old Testament and the repentance of the New Testament. And John the Baptist, who was preaching the repentance of the Old Testament, said that this repentance does not forgive past sins and does not help you avoid future sins. What forgive past sins and helps us avoid future sins is the New Testament repentance which is described as developing the virtue of penance. Since Christ had already perfected the Old Testament into the New Testament, we should concentrate on the repentance on the New Testament, working very hard to be worthy to receive from God the virtue of penance. Because the virtue of penance is a virtue, it's a gift from God. And so, we have to do something to win from God so He can give us this virtue. On Ash Wednesday, we were told the three things we must do so that God will give us the virtue of penance. The gospel told us we must pray, fast, and perform good works. Now, if you will notice, prayer Fasting and good works is the way to overcome the three temptations of the devil. Christ allowed himself to be tempted three times. And all men will be tempted in these three different ways. All men, without any exception, you and I have to undergo this test wherein the devil will be allowed by God to tempt us three times. One temptation more serious than the other. And the third is the most serious temptation. And to overcome these three temptations, we must continuously pray, fast, and perform good works. 
It's the only way to overcome the three gradual, progressive temptation of the devil. The first temptation of the devil, which will be discussed yet this coming Sunday, is temptation towards physical food. And Christ was tempted when the devil told him to change stone into bread. The second temptation is a temptation to return to the world. And the third temptation is a temptation to be proud of the progress you have in the spiritual life. If you pass the first temptation and overcome it, the devil will not tempt you in the second way and in the third way. If you pass the first temptation, so if you overcome the temptation of the Israelites who, when they were in the desert, were fed by God by the most wonderful food, the manna, still they were thinking of the food they ate in Egypt. Adam and Eve, they were surrounded by thousands of fruit trees in the Garden of Eden. But they were tempted with only one fruit tree, the forbidden fruit. That is how the devil first tempts you to tempt you to desire the food that you like. And that's precisely the reason why in monasteries the rule is eat whatever is served. Even in the world, that is the way to train children. Train them to eat whatever is served. Not for them to keep on desiring food that is not being served. If you fail that test, you will fail the second, and you will fail the third. So if you keep on keeping your desire for certain food, and you do not overcome it, the devil will tempt you to return to the world where he can destroy you all the more. So anyone who returns to the world has fallen into the second temptation of the devil. And how come he fell? Because he fell already at the first temptation of the devil, desiring food that is not being served. And so, therefore, the first test has to be passed. You have to pass it. You have to overcome it, this desire for food. And the way to do it is through fasting. Now, our fasting in the monastic life is not the giving up of food because that is Old Testament fasting. It is simply eating whatever is served. That is our fasting. How important is fasting? In the Gospel for today, 
the Israelites and the followers of St. John the Baptist were fasting. But the apostles and disciples of Christ were not. So they were eating like us, whatever is being served, whatever was available. And so the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees were complaining, how come we are fasting and your disciples are not? And Christ says, well, as long as I am around, they should not fast. But the moment I ascend to heaven, they ought to fast. How come? Because as long as Christ is present, Christ himself can drive the devil away from them. But the moment Christ has ascended to heaven, they have the apostles and the disciples had to drive the devil by themselves. And to drive the devil away, you need fasting. Remember once the disciples and apostles went to Christ and they were trying to drive devils from people who were possessed and they could not. They could not drive. And these are the apostles and the disciples of Christ. When they asked Christ, how come? Because Christ said, this one can only be driven through prayer and fasting. So you see, if the devil has conquered you and has entered into you because you have failed the first test, you have to drive the devil away. And the way to do it is through prayer and fasting. In the first reading for today, did you notice how the first reading describes fasting? It says, fasting is feeding the hungry and giving shelter to the homeless and clothing to the naked. Now, isn't that supposed to be good works? How come it is described in the first reading as fasting? Because of this. Because when we give food to the hungry, the food that we must give to the hungry must be food that we are supposed to eat and which we are going to fast. We are not going to eat in order to give it to those who are hungry. Did you get that? In other words, True fasting is when you give up your possessions in order to help others. So fasting and good works go hand in hand. What you give to others in helping their needs must come from your fasting. And so, fasting is described as good works. It goes together, fasting and good works. 
And not only that, when you are fasting, you have to pray to God that you are fasting in the right way. Not in order to be seen by man. And when you perform good works, you have to pray to make sure that you do not perform the good work to be seen by man. So notice the three prayer, fasting, and good works always go hand in hand. It's together. You do it now up to the end of your lives because you will need those three to overcome all the temptations of the devil, the strongest of which will come when you are dying. Because when you are dying, especially if you're dying in the monastery, you will begin to be proud. Well, look, I persevered in the monastery up to my death. How wonderful I am. How good, how holy I am. So that is the last and the greatest temptation of the devil for you to be proud in being holy, in following Christ. You be proud of being patient and humble. But that will not occur if you overcome the first Test. And the first test is eating the food, desiring the food that you like, which can only be cured by fasting, which means simply eating what is served. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.